Hi everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Richard Seidlitz, I'm the owner of redpants.lol. Today I'm going to discuss a little problem I've been having. Recently something I care about quite a bit and use very often has stopped getting up on its own and it doesn't function the way it should without me giving it a helping hand. Um, it makes things rather tedious and difficult when I'm ready to get going. As you can see, my screen was not getting up on its own and I had to use my hand to help it along the way. For those of you that are being a bit cynical about using this at all, I totally understand, which is why I went through such great lengths to bring Aston Installations infotainment kits to the United States and elsewhere. This is very, very, very worthwhile to have if you are interested in those kits. They make everything easier. I use it every single day because then I can use Waze, I can use uh, Amazon Streaming Music, you can use whatever apps you want that go through Android. Auto or Apple CarPlay. I've also got front and rear cameras which also display on this same screen which were part of that infotainment upgrade kit. If you're interested it's worth looking into and it's a very worthwhile investment. So I do use this screen every day and when it doesn't work the way it should as you saw in that little clip yes it is a pain in the butt and it is really annoying to have to deal with it and kind of embarrassing if I have a passenger in the car which I never do but you know Someday, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, um, so getting this out is not that difficult except for the ski slope cover. That is that center panel that's in the center top of your dashboard. There are four clips that hold that in place. Two at the top and two at the bottom. You can rip that thing out. However, I don't encourage you to do that if you've never done it or seen it done in person. Uh, it is a very scary thing to do and you can break something if you're not careful. Especially true if you have piano black veneer and somewhat true if you have any of the, of the wood veneers. I don't have any of those. I have one of the plastic hex or swirl or whatever it is veneers uh, covers so I can just rip mine out. However, it is easy to use a trim tool like this one. You can slot this down and then pry it up. You just need to do the top where those two clips are and the bottom where those two clips are and you can lift that up. Before you pull on that, make sure you disconnect the cover from the screen. As you can see, there are these two wire clips here. These slot behind the underside of the nav screen cover. All you have to do to release them is lift up on that a little bit and you'll see them sitting in there, pull them out and they will come out from behind the tab where they are slotted into. Once you've done that, you can lift it up a bit and disconnect the start button. If you have a sport shift, there's also a connector on each of those buttons as well. You don't have to worry about the vents. Those only have a bit of foam padding that is there for installation. Don't be surprised if that foam is falling off. All you need is a little bit of glue to put it back on. Um, that's very common. I see it on, I think, almost all cars that I've ever done this on. Um, there's very often at least one of those two vents will have the foam falling off. Uh, but with the screen disconnected, from the screen cover, those four tabs, uh, clips released, and then the buttons um, disconnected, you can pull that cover off and set it aside. You will then expose your nav unit. It's got four bolts, excuse me, screws, two on each side, here and here, and you just need a Phillips head screwdriver to release them. With those four screws out, you can see that there are two plugs, a blue one and a gray one. Be very careful when disconnecting these because you have a lot of metal edges around here. And while this isn't necessarily sharp in this area, there are some parts of this that can get a little finger cutty. So be very careful. Um, once you disconnect these two plugs, you can pull the unit out and get to work on setting up your new gears. Okay, first thing is first. These two sides from the top are gonna look the same. However, on the bottom, we have one side with the connectors and the other side with the label. We're gonna be doing everything on the connector side over here. So this is the section we're gonna be looking at. First things first, let's take off this plastic cover here. On one side, we have a screw. So we are going to remove that. And then on the other side, down inside of here, there is a little tab that's bumped out and we wanna put our screwdriver, a little tiny flathead screwdriver, down inside of there and just pop it open like that. 
and we're going to keep our screw with that so we know which one belongs where. Here you can see that we have our motor and our gears, however we still can't get to these gears in here because they're blocked by this panel. To get this panel off, we have to get this bracket off. But to get this bracket off, we have this overlapping lip right here with that screw that is part of the main panel here. So we are going to loosen these two screws. You don't have to remove them all the way, just loosen them. Like so. And then we will do this one. This third one is going to come out all the way. So there's that. And then, oh, sorry, if there's blood all over this, this is, this is the blood from my finger. I just realized that that's there. That's that uh, screwdriver wound. And there we go. We're gonna remove this one next. And then we have underneath this foam pad, we have one more. We lift it up and there it is. You can see it underneath the foam. Now all these have been removed and we've loosened these, so we're just gonna lift up on this. And you can see that this one right here, this alignment nub, just needs to be cleared by this and then we're good. There's a couple of studs right here, so we're gonna angle it and it'll come right up and then we are done with that. We don't have to worry about taking this off anymore. So let's set that aside with these so we don't lose those. Next we have four screws that are on this one right here. So let's go ahead and remove those. Now these are the smaller ones, so I'm gonna use a smaller screwdriver. Be very careful when doing this not to strip these screws out because it will be very difficult to deal with them otherwise. You'll have to get a Dremel and cut the heads of the screws and go from there. So when you're doing the screwdriver, just slow and steady. Okay, those four screws are out, but this cannot be removed just yet because down inside of here is one more. And I'm gonna put this screw on, it is at an angle, so you do have to kind of push this cable down a little bit, but it is right here inside of there. And when you look in there, you can see it. This one, you do not have to remove. You only have to loosen it to get this out because it is on this slot right here. As you can see, it's not an actual hole, it's just a slot. So once the pressure is released from there, you can just pull this out and then the panel with the motor on it is released and we have all of our gears exposed. The first two that we're gonna be looking at are the top one, which gets reused, so don't remove it. But you can see that it just sets on there and slides right off. The second one does get replaced, that's this big guy right here and that is going to be this one. With this one out of the way, you can bring this one up. These tabs right here and right here might be in the way. However, this is flexible, so you can just give it a little bit of a push to clear that up. Don't bend it, don't break it. Just give it a little bit of a push to release those. Once these two are out of the way, in fact, I'm just gonna pull these out. Hopefully this video goes well, because when I did this yesterday, my hands got so gross and this is what I'm talking about where you just have to give that a little bit of a push. This right here is going to be the only other difficult part of this job. As you can see, there's a C-clip and a washer and these two are also gonna be replaced. Um, I mean, there's the, C the old washer right here and then there's the old C-clip. See, it's all stuck together because of all the grease and stuff. Um, that's the old C-clip. These are, all four of these pieces are included with the Navgear upgrade kit and I do package the washer and C-clip in another tiny baggie within the bag that these come in simply so that they don't get lost because you can see how easily they just kind of disappear on their own. Getting this off is a little bit tricky because you have the C-clip on, on top and basically you have to stick something in there and pry it that way. And it's not too difficult. As you see, I, can, I basically just did all I have to give, do is give it some more pressure and that will come off. Once that C-clip is out, you can just pop the washer off. There are two mounting points for this spring. You have got this one right here and you've got this one down here. When you use your noodle, noodle nose, your needle nose pliers, you can just get in there and pop that off like so. 
I'm trying to do this without actually seeing what I'm doing. And that's it. You do the same, once you've done that and this is off, you can then just do the same thing on the bottom. This will spin right off and you can release it. Getting it back in is just reverse assembly. Put the spring back on, rotate it so that the bottom part hooks back in on that little tab. And then again, go up here and this is always so much harder on camera because I'm facing away from what I'm doing or the, what I'm doing is facing away from me. And you just hook it back on like that. What I find easiest is to put the washer and C-clip back on before doing the springs, because once those are in place, the spring is gonna be under tension and it's gonna make it harder to get this lined up. This um, plastic gear, as you can see, has a half moon design to it. And there's a tab up here and a tab down here that are gonna slot onto that. So it's very easy to get that lined up properly. You really can't mess it up. The only thing that you can mess it up is switching this around so the geared section is on the outside. But if you do that, it's not actually gonna function because then these gears, the teeth on this on this one, aren't going to be able to slide on there. They're gonna be on the opposite side and so nothing's gonna work. You'll know right away if you've done it wrong because those gears aren't gonna be there. But we just put it back together and that's it. The last thing to do before this gets reassembled and put in the car is to lubricate these gears. I have some white lithium grease that was in my garage. It's not ideal because it's a little heavy and sticky for this application. However, I can get away with it because I'm in a hot climate in Florida. If you're not in a hot climate, you'll definitely want to use something a bit more lightweight. Um, you can find that on, you know, at a parts store maybe, but definitely on Amazon or um, a hobby store, anything that's just a lightweight lubricant for plastic components it is all it is um, make sure those are lubed up and then reassemble everything test this out in the car to make sure it works and it should if not you may have a bigger problem with the screen unit itself and i hope that's not the case because these little guys can be pretty expensive but that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions please feel free to reach out rich at redpants.lol or the contact page of redpants.lol and make sure you browse those diy guides like i said i have a very awesome step-by-step -step instruction guide for this one with pictures and everything that's probably going to be even easier than watching this video so i hope that helps and i will see you next time